the Japanese Emperor Sai Itoshi versus the Ace Eater Don Lorenzo. These two, in addition to Michael Kaiser, mark the pinnacle of U20 football, with each reigning on the throne of the position they play for with terror. In fact, it's not simply that they are the best in their respective positions. No one actually comes even close to those two beasts. So you already know it, today's matchup is the best versus the best baby. As usual, we are going to look at their stats, abilities and explore their best feats to determine who is the overall better player. But we are going to take it further and answer the most important question. Can Lorenzo really lock up Sai, the way he did to Kaiser? Before we carry on however, if you enjoy this type of videos, please consider subscribing and joining my community discord server for more amazing blue lock theories and reviews. And now without any further ado, on with the video. Sai Itoshi, the Itachi of Blue Lock, a cool-headed, well-rounded player, very professional but also very egotistical, with a little of a brotherly complex, having an innate talent for football ever since he was a kid, to the point of getting scouted at a very young age by Real, the best club in the world of Blue Lock, which is an insane of a feat and made Sai to be regarded as the prodigy of Japan. This genius boasts an amazing physicality similar to that of his brothers, but also he presents a broken set of skills that enables him to dominate the midfield. In addition, Sai is one of the most versatile players we've seen thus far, but as usual we are going to start with his physical stats. And as I just stated, Sai boasts a great well-rounded physicality, which is very similar to Rin's. In the U20 game we clearly saw how they were evenly matched physically speaking. But also from a narrative point of view, the Itoshi brothers mirror each other. The same physicality but Sai is left-sided while Rin is right-sided. This means that much like Rin and Ryo, Sai doesn't dominate any area. However, he has great raw power and strength, great speed and of course great jumping ability. Now we don't really know about his endurance since he didn't go all out in the U20 game. But I mean he's a new gen 11. Obviously he has great endurance numbers. You could say Sai is the complete package when it comes to physicality. But with that ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to move to his abilities and weapons. Since Sai is a midfielder, let's start with what's pretty much a prerequisite for that position, the passing ability. And well, Sai has the best passing ability we have seen thus far. In that one game he played that he wasn't even taken seriously, Sai still performed passes on a level that we have never seen before. Saying he was on another level is an understatement. In fact, we are yet to see a player even close to that. First, it was the accuracy of the passes. We have seen some players with insane shooting accuracy like Renan Kaiser. However, the net is stationary and shooting is very different from matching the fast moving front line. But still, Sai was delivering diabolically accurate passes. In one instance, as Chigi was covering Shido, Sai was able to deliver a very powerful pass that was about 2 cm outside of Chiguri's reach, but still matched Shiro's goal image. Not only was this pass super accurate, it also was at the right speed and power, because Shiro was not even facing Sai and turned based on his instincts that were completely matched by Sai. In fact, this is another property of his passes beyond his insane accuracy. You see, Sai delivers passes that match the striker's ideal play and bring the best of them. This is probably the thing that impressed me the most about him. The way he completely understood the U20 strikers. Not just Shido, even Sendo and the others, we saw how his passes helped them do their jobs better. I mean, they still were shit, but Sai brought the best out of them. In a sense, this resembles the egocentrism weapon that Isegi and later Baro obtained. However, it seems that it is only limited to his allies. Sai understands the motives and playing style of his teammates and morph his passes accordingly. They change based on the receiving striker, but also he challenges them to further immerse them into the play and get them closer to the flow state and bring the best out of them. Honestly, for a midfielder, this is quite impressive and makes Sai a very dangerous player. As if not dealt with, Sai is that type of player that takes his whole team up a notch. However, dealing with Sai is not an easy task at all, due to two of his abilities. First, his no interval plays. If you thought dealing with his accuracy was the only hard thing about his passes, you were wrong, because Sai can forward the ball to the strikers immediately after receiving it, with zero wasted time. In the U20 game, we clearly saw how the blue lockers were struggling just to actually keep up, where even speedsters like Chigire and Yuki were not even close to catching up, and we see them get taken by surprise multiple times. The only player who kept up was Shiro due to his instincts. 
Now, this ability works perfectly, as long as Sai's options are free, yet the second ability of his works regardless, and honestly makes Sai one of the most dangerous U20 players. I am talking about his dribbling ability, which is probably the best we have seen thus far in the U20 category, with maybe Pachera post levy training being the only player close. In fact, Sai was the first U20 player to introduce the reactive dribbling that we have seen from Luna before, which is a harder but far more effective type of dribbling, where in contrast to using your own rhythm to beat the opponent, Sai dribbles in response to the defender. In what we call the beautiful destruction, he takes his opponent's playing style and meticulously designs a dribbling pattern that fully counters it, allowing Sai to pass in an elegant way. And to make matters worse, Due to his no-interval plays, Sai completely eliminates the weakness of dribblers, which is them being cut off after performing their patterns. But with Sai we saw how that was completely meaningless. Even players with insane positioning like Rin and Isigi weren't able to stop him. And well, this and his no-interval plays are possible due to his strongest weapon. I'm talking about his ocular ability, MetaVision. Now, we never saw the MetaVision pattern from him, but the way he was playing and the way he was in total control of the midfield alluded to that. But later in the Manshine City game, Isigi deducted that the reason Sai's plays were on a different level was because of him having MetaVision, which he uses to the fullest to place himself impeccably to receive and the forward passes to the strikers with no interval. But also he was able to sneak up on many players, take loose balls and be in the most optimal position for both attack and defense. But more impressively, through MetaVision, Sai is always monitoring the field, and this enables him to move with no intervals, giving the defenders no time to breathe at all. And as I said, we have seen how even speedsters get thrown off by this badly. Alright, finally I want to state that there are still more to Sai. In the same vein as his super accurate passes, Sai boasts an insanely accurate shooting ability. In fact, him and Kazer are the only U20 players we have seen able to shoot for the smallest of targets with insane accuracy, with Ren being the only player that can rival them here. But in the U20 game, the writer made it clear, Sai boasts an even better shooting ability than that of Rin's, with better overall control, which was shown in his goal that Rin failed to copy. Granted, Rin was using his lefty leg and not his dominant one, but with no other feats to indicate otherwise, Sai still has better accuracy. And another example of this insane accuracy was where if it weren't for Aryu's insane reach, Sai would have completely destroyed Gagamaru with an insanely accurate shot to the top corner. But this also indicates that unlike Kaiser and Baro, Sai's shooting is a bit lacking in terms of power as well as in swinging speed. But the fact of the matter remains, Sai has one of the highest shooting accuracy ever. It honestly makes me wonder what kind of eagle eye does Sai has to have the best accuracy for both shooting and passing. But also this adds to his versatility a lot. If needs be, Sai can become a very reliable striker with his dribbling, positioning and shooting, resulting in one of the most dominant and versatile U20 players we have seen thus far. But can he beat the Italian Don? Before we carry on however, I am happy to announce that this video is sponsored by Anime Express. If you are looking for the best quality shirts, hoodies, jewelry and LEDs featuring your favorite anime and manga, like Jujutsu Kaisen and Demon Slayer, head to AnimeExpress.store and use code ACE10 for a 10% discount on your purchases. The link is in the description, thank you. And now back to our matchup. Don Lorenzo, the ace eater and the main center back of the new gen 11. With what's probably the saddest backstory in Blue Lock, Lorenzo is a very light-hearted and funny player, takes nothing for granted and enjoys every aspect of life, even challenges and strong opponents. Lorenzo is also a very friendly person, often sharing his thoughts with everyone, from what he likes to even strategies to his opponents. And the reason I am actually talking about his personality this much is in addition to him having a very sad and hard childhood which totally explained his joyful persona, Lorenzo is actually the first insane player we have seen that has no ego. All he cares about is money, friends and his mentor Snuffy, which is interesting to say the least. The fact that he is the best U20 center back and such a dominant defender all without having any ego is mind boggling, especially at this high level. He broke the only rule of this show, ego being a prerequisite to being the best. The fact that he was able to pocket Kaiser, probably the player with the biggest ego without showing any of his, is an insane feat honestly. But this also made me wonder, what kind of a beast will he be if he awakens his ego? But this is a discussion for another day and another video. For now, we are going to start with his physicality. And much like the dilemma of his ego, here another one presents itself. 
Lorenzo is a very weak player, with probably one of the worst physicalities, even weaker than Isigi and Bacera, which makes him having the best dueling ability all the more puzzling. And in the same vein, his jumping ability is pretty laughable, with no feats whatsoever. In fact, Snuffy being the genius that he is, completely accounted for this weakness, and placed the two best players at area confrontations Ario and Aiko next to Lorenzo, which is a great indication that he has a very low jump in numbers. Next, let's talk speed, which is his first above average stats. It is by no means insane like the speedsters, but it is not that bad either. And finally, it's time for his endurance, which is another mind-boggling stat of his. Even though Lorenzo is a skinny dude, we saw how he was the heart of Ubers for both defense and offense, scaling the pitch up and down repeatedly, and being at the start of almost every attack, all while having Kaiser man marked throughout the game which might actually be the best endurance feat we have seen thus far. Overall, Lorenzo's physical stats aren't really great, despite his overall high numbers, which is where his special abilities and weapons come into play. So let's get into that, ladies and gentlemen. First, let's talk about his most impressive weapon, that actually explains how despite the low physical stats, his dueling ability is the best in the U20 category. I'm talking about his insane agility, and by consequence reach, in his introduction, we saw how Lorenzo leaped forward towards Kaiser, who even with his speed got beaten to the ball, but also throughout the game, we saw the way he was throwing himself forward and being able to snatch almost every ball, but also with his long limbs, his reach is insane. Add to that the fact that Lorenzo has an insane perception and cat-like reflexes that enable him to read situations really fast and react even faster. And with his high reach, he becomes a very tricky player to get past one-on-one. -on -one. In fact, we are yet to see a player do that to Lorenzo, whether be it off the ball one-on-one -on -one or dribble past him. The only two players who managed to do anything were Hiyori and Ness. However, both actually passed the ball immediately after getting the ball, and neither even attempted to try and dribble past him, which is a point that I will get back to later. For now, let's carry on explaining why this guy has 99 score and their defense. Well, the next ability is actually his best defense-wise, which is in fact a compound weapon of his perception and reach. I'm talking about his ability to completely negate a player if he marks him. His ability to mandate the strictest of lockdowns. We have seen this from him in the Bastard game, where he rendered Kaiser completely useless. It was such a one-sided encounter to the point the only time Kaiser was able to do anything was when Lorenzo had to cover other dangerous situations, mainly caused by Isigi. This honestly is such an insane feat, as Kaiser is the hardest striker to stop in the U20 category hands down, and the way Lorenzo pocketed him for a full game is just dirty. Man, not only did he beat him one-on-one, -on -one, he also prevented him from receiving passes in critical positions, which let me reiterate, this is Kaiser we are talking about. The man has the best of the ball movements in the U20 category, and has the best ability to shake off the defenders. And the fact that Kaiser couldn't shake him off not even once on his own, is a great testament to the Italian Don. Even with his speed, Kaiser couldn't escape his watch. Yet, Kaiser still has an ace in a hole, which is his shooting ability, that can even rival the pros. But impressively enough, Lorenzo was the only player we know of who was able to stop the Kaiser impact. Not even goalkeepers can boast about this, yet he did it with such a smug on his face. Man, he's super funny. But in all seriousness, there is still one ability of his that might explain how he was able to do so, and how Kaiser couldn't do anything. Now, I understand this wasn't straight up confirmed by any statement, but much like Kaiser's predator eyes were only confirmed by the eye design, Lorenzo has shown the assassin eyes design throughout the bastard game. And for those who don't remember, the assassin eyes are an ocular ability introduced by Carasso in the third selection, where they allow the player to focus on an opponent to completely counter said opponent, and allow the wielder to dominate the duel. Now, Caruso introduced it as the weaker link targeting kind of an ocular ability, but later he evolved it to target the strongest link, being Sai in the U20 game, which was the case also here for Lorenzo. Through these eyes, it makes perfect sense how he was able to zone in on Kaiser and completely assassinate him, but also might explain why when he is focused on Kaiser, it is a bit harder for him to use his otherwise very high perception. But this actually completes his set of defensive skills, which are the best in the U20 category, of course. But if we take a look at his stat chart, we see that defense isn't the only thing Lorenzo excels at. In fact, the Dawn is the beating heart of Ubers in terms of defense and offense, and so let's explore this side to him. First, let's talk about his dribbling, which he is a whopping 93, and tied with freaking Chigiri and his insane zigzags. And well, in his first introduction, after intercepting the ball from Kaiser, Lorenzo proceeded to literally mop the floor with Bastard, 
In what we call the zombie steps, Lorenzo throws his center of gravity way off to both sides, making it near impossible for the opponent to read his movements. It's not like he has insane rhythms or patterns or techniques, all he does is makes it tricky to read him, and thus extremely hard to stop him. This is possible due to Lorenzo's weird body structure, where his upper body moves completely freely compared to his legs. And in case you are still not convinced that this is super deadly, you have to remember that the main thing that Lavinio taught Bachira was the Jenga, which resembles the zombie steps, in that the upper body being detached from your footwork makes it near impossible to read your dribbling. Because for those who don't know, usually your upper body is the part that rely to the opponent, which direction your center of gravity and by consequence your dribble is going. However, with the Jenga and the zombie steps, this weakness is completely nullified. And if you have ever seen any matchup video of mine, to me, rivaling the pros in any aspect is such a huge feat for the U20 players. As for Lorenzo, this makes him a menace of a midfielder, especially when coupled with his great passing ability. Next I have to mention this ability again, as it works differently on offense. I'm talking about his high perception. Now, while not even close to the level of players with metavision, Lorenzo actually has a very high field IQ that enables him to pick the best routes towards the goal, whether through his dribbling or deciding among the passing options, which works super well with Ubers as we've seen him being the anchor of the varying patterns Snuffy engraved in them, and makes him the beating heart of Ubers. In all honesty, the fact that Lorenzo dominates two totally opposing areas is such a huge versatility feat. Being the best defender, and at the same time a very oppressive forward midfielder, makes Lorenzo a beast of a player, but can he beat Sai? For how this matchup will go, as I said, we are going to first see if Lorenzo can actually stop Sai one on one and put him in a lockdown the way he did to Kaiser, then we will get to answering who is the overall better player. So, as we all know, Lorenzo's best feat is taming Kaiser, and so can he do the same to Sai? So for starter, that lockdown worked so well due to two reasons. First, the assassin's eyes, or at least Lorenzo's ability to target Kaiser's main selling point, that is his off the ball movements. And actually this will be the best chance that Lorenzo might have at stopping Sai. As I said in their matchup, Kaiser's off the ball movements are far better than that of Sai. And so I think Lorenzo's lockdown might even work better, and it might get even scarier for Sai. Alright, but what about when Sai eventually gets the ball, like we've seen with Kaiser after a throw or a kickoff? Well, here where Sai shines. Unlike Kaiser, Sai's dribbling is off the charts. And even though we've never seen a player dribble past Lorenzo, I think, if ever, Sai is the man to do it. Now, I want to say that it won't be easy at all, and it might be extremely difficult, since Sai's signature reactive dribbling won't be effective against Lorenzo due to his unorthodox movements, but still Sai has other oppressive dribbling techniques. This will be a hard difficulty win, if any at all. And here I want to address something that I keep seeing over and over again. There is Hiyori being able to get past Lorenzo, which to that I would say when and where. In their first face-off, he immediately passed the ball to Isiki. He didn't even entertain the idea of keeping the ball on him, or try to dribble unlike we usually see him with other players. This was exactly what Nas did with Kaiser, he passed the ball immediately after getting it. This does not equate to them winning one on one against Lorenzo, they actually passed to other players. And in their second encounter, Lorenzo was on Kaiser and saw that Hiyori is about to shoot, and he lunged forward to stop the shot, which was the exact same situation with Isigi moments before, but it was a bait. This was smart from both Isigi and Hiyori, and really such a great feat. But again, neither of them won not even once against Lorenzo one on one, and they wouldn't even dream of that at their current level. However, Sai is far more experienced, and still has a very deadly weapon, which is Sai's no interval plays, that actually can play on Lorenzo's weakness, especially with him having no speed nor meta vision to stop them. And with this in mind, I would say Lorenzo will actually have to mandate the strictest of lockdowns on Sai, and not allow him any breather. Otherwise, Lorenzo will have an uphill battle stopping Sai once he gets the ball, which is really interesting. But with that, we reach the real assessment of who is better. First, when talking overall, one might assume that Sai takes the win here easily. And while this is true, physically speaking, as Sai stomps Lorenzo in every physical aspect, however, it's not as straightforward as one might think. As always, physical stats don't tell the full story. For that, let's take both to a real game and evaluate how would they fare on the pitch. Usually for these matchups, the ocular ability is the main point of comparison as basically they allow the player to dominate. 
However, the case with Lorenzo, his ocular ability shines in one-on-one -on -one duels, and even though he has an insane perception and special awareness, he can't compare to Sai's meta vision when it comes to field readability and game control. In fact, this is a territory where Sai shines more than anyone. In addition to his meta vision, his ability to completely understand his strikers and further challenge them and bring the best of them is second to none. And thus, in terms of dominating the midfield, even though Lorenzo showed how insane of a midfielder and how much he can lead an attack, it is not even close. However, it's even worse for Sai when comparing the two in terms of defense. Sai's metavision enables him to take the shortest of route to the most critical position, but it is nowhere near the level of defending the zombie man has shown us. Great positioning does not equal great defending, as was the case with Isigi and Kaiser. Even though Sai was able to corner Isigi, he didn't stop the attack, and in fact Blue Lock ended up scoring. To be honest, this is unfair, since Sai doesn't participate in defending the way Lorenzo does for creating opportunities. However, this does not mean Sai is not versatile. As I stated, when needs be, Sai can really fill the role of a striker. It will be just how Lorenzo isn't the best midfielder, but still oppressive. Sai isn't Kaiser or Baro by any means, but still he got meta vision, positioning, dribbling, and his insanely accurate shooting ability. However, I'm going to say this, the way Lorenzo was on offense was something else. His deadly dribbling, him beating a whole team, and not U20 game level like Sai. This was Kunigami post wildcard training, Raichi and Bastard defenders who all were training under Noah. And so it is much more impressive than how Sai was on defense and as a striker. And to be honest, Lorenzo stopping over Kaiser like that, and then him adapting to Isigi and Kaiser's meta vision on offense, will always be much better of a feat than how Sai was in the U20 game. Don't get me wrong, he was still insane, and to be honest, he wasn't going all out. It's just that he doesn't have the feats that would be better than how the Dawn was in the Bastard game. Narratively speaking, Sai is better and has more potential especially with his backstory with Rin. However, feats wise Lorenzo is better right now. And yes, you heard it right, Lorenzo is overall better than Sai. I really went into this thinking Sai is the best overall player we have seen in the U20 category. But as of right now, Lorenzo has far more impressive feats, and thus is the winner of our matchup. Well, that's it for the video guys, I hope you enjoyed and until next time, thank you for watching.